Welcome back to our Corner to Corner Crochet Along. In this episode, we're gonna be working on the Columbine striped scarf. We are going to learn how to change colors, how to transition from one color to the next, and then how to square out one side and the other end to turn that triangle that we're working corner to corner into a rectangle. Are you ready to get started? This one's exciting because now we get to change color. Now that you're all settled into how, the how of making C to C corner to corner crochet, now we get to play with, so what else can I do with it? So this time you get to choose the colors. You get to choose the magic of how these colors shift. And so in this scarf project, um, I chose three colors that transition in and out of each other. So you can see here, I'm working with this, the sheep cheese yarn, uh, both the stone washed and the river washed because there's just so many colors to choose from and play with. I mean, any three colors, so any three colors, you just wanna choose something that helps to unite them. Like pick two colors and then choose a third one that sorta of pulls from both of them. So I've got two different palettes here, let me show you. You can see this one too. Like these two don't look super related, but when you bring this one in, they work all together. So the striping pattern for this one, you can see I start with the really deep magenta and then the purple that has that sort of gold behind it, then into that gold and then back to that purple and gold, back to the magenta. So it sort of ripples through and you work until you run out of this intermediary color. And then we switch to just stripes of those two opposite colors and it's such a pop. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. I love it. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through, uh, if we go back to the corner where we start, just like with the shawl in the last episode, we start in the corner and we work out it makes a triangle. I'm gonna show you how to square up this corner so that we can start turning this into a rectangle. And then at the other end, when you get to the other end of the scarf, how to bring that back across to close up the other end of the rectangle. So this starts the same way that our shawl started. So we're gonna start with our slip knot. I'm gonna chain six. I'm gonna work into that fourth chain from the hook. Now this one I'm not being super fussy about the edge, so I'm just gonna work under the top of the chain instead of going into the back bump, but you can go into the back bump if you're, if you're comfortable with that process and if you're you're really liking that look. That's row one, block one, easy peasy. Row two starts with a chain six, four, five, six. Then we work into the fourth chain from the hook. This is where we bring that first block up behind Here's that space so we can do the slip stitch that joins these two blocks together. So now, the, all right, let me show you this. This is, this is a funky thing. When I did this slip stitch, it almost looks like it's up here in the top of that chain space. So it feels like this block is sort of being pulled up. What you can do is just kind of pull your chain out a little bit. See that? I just pulled my chain out so that that slip stitch is way over here on the side. And now I can do my chain three and my three double crochets. And the color stripes to start in this scarf are three rows. So we're gonna do three rows of one color Four, five, six. See, it gets, you get so comfortable with this, you can talk while you're doing it because it just becomes autopilot, especially if you do that shawl first. I mean, 60 rows of this. It will live under your skin and you won't even have to think about it anymore. Um, 
So we're doing three row stripes, and then we're gonna change colors. All right, first block is done. Rotate that piece up behind. Find your chain three space. Do your slip stitch, and then move on to make your block. Chain three, three double crochets back in that same space. So there are gonna be ends to weave in on this project. And I don't mind weaving in ends. If you super don't like weaving in ends, teach your kids how to do it and tell them they're helping. <laughs> That's what I did with my girls when they were little. You wanna help? Here's what mama needs help with. They were good for a year or two. Um, or just, it's, it's part of the process. Sometimes you want a really stunning striped project. You're gonna have to weave in ends. So here I am at the end of row three. Almost. I still have one more yarn over to finish that stitch, but because I'm wanting to do the next row in the next color, I'm actually going to finish this stitch with my next color. So I'm just going to grab it and move it over here because I always like my yarn to come in from my left when I crochet. And I'm just going to fold this yarn over into a loop, grab it with my hook, and pull it through. It seems counterintuitive to do that at first because because you're thinking, but then that new color is gonna be in the old row, but it really isn't. It only lives up here on the hook as the potential for the next stitch. Remember the loop on your hook at any given time isn't anything. It's the potential for the next stitch. So you can see that finished off this block, all pretty in that same bluey color, and now we're ready to go into that really dark red. And for row four, it's the same as we've been doing. Chain six, double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. Another double crochet in the fifth chain and another double crochet in that sixth chain. Now, sometimes that sixth chain, because that's where we joined, our yarn is gonna get kind of big. You can just tug on the tail and that closes it back up. We're gonna rotate this up behind so that we can join it here with the slip stitch and then chain for the next block. So that's how easy it is to change colors. It's, it's, it really is that simple. Just the last yarn over of the last stitch of the row is where you grab your new color and start to work with it. And that, that gives you your nice clean transition to the next color. So you'll continue in your pattern doing your three row color stripes until you get to row 13. And let me show you what that looks like in the scarf. So again, the great thing with corner to corner crochet is that you can tell what row you're on by the number of blocks that you have. So if you count the number of blocks that you have across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. But this isn't row 13. That's because 13, row 13 is the last time that we work across the way that we've always worked across. Row 14 is where we actually start to square up one side of this. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna bring in this little sample again. And I know this only has three, but we're gonna pretend that this is row, the end of row 13. So I've done my, let me just take this out here at the edge. Let's say this is the end of row 13. So here I am at the end of row 13. I'm gonna do my slip stitch here. And then what we would have done if this was a regular row 14, uh, regular row 13 would be to chain three and then do three double crochets, but we're gonna stop one block early. And instead of where before when we finished a row, we would rotate the piece up behind like that. We're just gonna turn it over. See that? We're just turning it over. We're not bringing it up behind anything. We're just turning it over. So this is more like turning your piece over after a row in regular crochet. Um, and then my yarn here is sort of coming across the front. So I'm just gonna wrap it around behind and give it a little 
tug and straighten it out. Okay, so from here, we don't have that extra block here. What we want to do is travel up the side of this last block that we made. And we're going to do that with slip stitches in the top of the double crochets that we made. I'm going to go into the top of that double crochet, bring up a loop, pull it through the loop on your hook. And you're going to do that three times, once for each double crochet. And then there we are at the chain three space. We do our slip stitch in the chain three space. Aha! Now we're back to what we know. We're going to chain three and then do three double crochets into that same chain three space. That's two. That's three. Sometimes you split your yarn. But that's all right, it happens. Then slip stitch to the next block. Chain three, two, three. Three double crochets. Then one more here. And here we are on the last block. Same block as always, chain three, three double crochets. And that is the end of row 14. So 14 finishes the same way. Finish this block. And look, that block matches up with that edge that we squared up. So we don't want to do another block. We're going to slip stitch here, and then we don't want to chain. We don't want to chain three and create another block. This is where we want to turn the work over and do our slip stitches in the edge to get back up to the top. So my tip for this, when you are doing this row that starts with the slip stitches up along the side, when you do this first block, let me just get this block made for you. You're gonna put a stitch marker. You're gonna grab a stitch marker and you're going to put it in that chain three space. Lock it in place. Remember as a crocheter, you want to use a locking ring stitch marker or a stitch marker that's a coil, something that you can place in the work and it's going to stay there on its own because you're, you're going to move away from it. Um, this way, when you come back in the next row, you'll get to that spot. And you'll be like, right, this is where I stop. I don't make another block after this stitch marker. So that's it. You're just going to continue with those two rows. And again, the details are in your pattern. You're going to continue with those two rows. Look, I've got three. So this one should actually be a different color. What happens if I do that? We just take it out. It's super simple. Just pull that out and go back to what? the last stitch of the row. So I need to take out these slip stitches and go back to this very last stitch. And that is where I will change color. So let me just show you that. Now, if you didn't trim your tail when you changed color, it's still attached to the last stripe that you did. And I, I do this for myself. I don't cut my yarn as I work along. I just make a long loop that's twice as long as what I think I need for a tail to weave in, and then I'll cut it afterwards. So I'm just gonna bring this long loop around to my hook, finish that stitch. There's my new stitch in the new color, and I've just got two colors here, you'll have three. Then I do my slip stitch, roll my work over, there's that tail and I'm ready to do my slip stitches along the edge. See that? And start the next row. Now, you're gonna work the body of the scarf. You'll change colors every three rows in pattern as it indicates until you run out of that third color. So there's five skeins in your kit if you pick up one of our kits, which you can do at onebighappy.com. 
We'll have lots of different colors for you to choose from. You're gonna continue in those three colors until you run out of this third color. And then you're gonna switch to two row stripes. I don't know why, that's just the design inspiration. That's what hit me, I ran out of three colors. I only had two colors left, so we moved to two row stripes. So you can see the difference there. That's a three row stripe, three row, and then we move into two row stripes. And when you move into the two row stripes, your ends will all be on one side because you're gonna start on one side with a color, go across, come back, then you'll start the next color. So you'll if you if you cut your ends, they'll all be along one side. If you do loops like I do, they'll all be along one side until you get to where you have to start squaring out and reaching the other corner of this scarf. And let me show you what that looks like. All right, so here I have a sample where I haven't transitioned into the two row stripes, but I'm gonna show you how to begin to square up the other end. Um, this is a great technique for placemats, coasters. Like you can play with all kinds of square and rectangle shapes with this. Um, all right, so I've got a stitch marker here just holding my live stitch. Because remember with crochet, you only ever have one live stitch. So if you need to put your work down, just put a locking ring stitch marker in that live stitch and then your work can't unravel. Oh, the heartbreak of an unraveled project. Okay. I can take this stitch marker out too. I had that there to remind myself that that was the end of the row. This side of the work here on the right hand side as I just worked my way across in this direction, right to left, because I'm right-handed. If you were left-handed, it's the same directions. You just, the pattern is the same. You just reverse directions. Whenever it says left to right, you would do right to left. Whenever it says right to left, you would do left to right. Um, so this is where I started this row. And this side is already squared up, right? So you can see that here. This is the corner we started in. And then this is the side that we squared up. So we're not gonna be squaring up this side of the scarf. We're gonna be squaring up the top to meet this side that we've squared up. So to do that, I'm going to turn the work over, not bring it up behind, just turn the work over. My yarn is in the front, so I wanna tuck it behind. And then, surprise, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna slip stitch along the top of these three double crochets. And then into the chain three space. And then chain three, and then three double crochets into that same chain three space, just as before. And now to remind myself Again, just like before, when we started working on squaring up that one side, I'm gonna put a stitch marker here to remind myself not to go past this when I come back. So now I'm gonna work my way across. And from row 14 to here, we have had 13 squares in each row, but this row is only gonna have 12. because of the way that we started this row. We didn't chain six and work that block out on the edge and then rotate the piece up behind to join. We stopped short of that by slip stitching up the side of the previous block. So this is where your rows start to get shorter and work in towards that corner point. Just working my way across to the other side. And you're gonna be doing those short slip stitch edges on both sides now. So when we get to the end of the row, we're not gonna do one more. We'll rechain three and do the three double crochets where it feels like it's out off of the edge of the work. And we're gonna stop at the last block and then turn and slip stitch our way across the top of the last double crochets that we made on both ends. So at the start of each row, 
that's how you're going to start. And if you put those stitch markers in your chain three space in the last block that you make, then you will catch yourself and you won't go too far. So I'm almost there. I think I have just a few more blocks to go. It gets exciting when you get to the end. Those rows get shorter and they go faster and faster. You're approaching the end of the project. An imminent wearability. Isn't that the great thing about the fiber arts? We make stuff and then we get to wear it and show it off. All right, so here I am. See, this block that I just made lines up with that block that has the stitch marker, so I know I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to take that stitch marker out. I'm going to do my slip stitch, and then I'm at the end of the row, so I want to change colors, right? Well, let me show you something. Back when we did this one, I changed color at the end of the last block, and then I did my slip stitches in my new color, yes? And you can see that it dips down along the edge. If you don't like that look and you want this to look the same as the block before, you can stay in the same color. So when I turn this, I can stay in the same color to do the slip stitches. One, two, three. And then I'm going to change color in the slip stitch to a chain three space. See that? And then I'll do my chain three. And then my three double crochets. I'm going to remember to put a stitch marker in that chain three space to remind myself to stop there at the end of the next row. And let me just bring this in here so you can see the difference. So you can see them side by side. See when we came up this block in the same color, it's a sharp transition, or you can transition up in the new color before you go into the new block. So it's just a slightly different look. It's your preference, whatever you want to do. I show you both, so you have the choice. So then you're just going to continue across. Each one of these rows is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. So this one had 12, the next one will have 11, 10, until you get all the way back to one. See that? That's where we're headed. And then that is your scarf. Now you're going to have a lot of ends to weave in. So let's talk about that for a minute. I'm going to put this loop on a stitch marker so I can come back to this project later. And let's talk about weaving in ends. All right, so here I, here I have a color transition. So I've got two ends to weave in. So let's, let's work on those real quick. The great thing with crochet stitches is there's a lot to them. So there's a lot of places to hide your yarn when you're weaving in. So I'm going to duck under the top of that stitch. Then I'm going to weave my way up through the body of this stitch. I'm just wandering around through the body of that stitch. See that? Now I don't want to pull it tight. If I pull it tight, see how that bunches everything up? I just want it to be through the body of the stitch as the stitch is. And then I'm going to wander down through the body of this stitch to the feet of this stitch. I love these bent tip needles because they really make it easy to get through everything. And you always want to weave at least an inch worth of yarn, sometimes more, and you want to change direction at least twice. And then, and then here I am, and you can see the feet of these stitches. That is my favorite place to hide the actual ends of my tails. So I'm going to go through a couple more strands and then through the feet of these stitches here just to the last one. See that? 
the last one right there. I'm going to come out just before the last one. And this one I'm going to tug a little bit tight just before I clip it. Not terribly tight, just a little bit. Because then when I pull back to sort of settle everything, that end disappears in there. Gone. Let's do one more. So here you can see this tail comes right off where those feet are. So I'm going to go through these feet all the way through. Oh. My tail's too long. That's all. Let me loosen that back up. And then I'm going to come down through the body of this stitch. wandering my way around and then through these feet. Again, I'm going to come out before that last little bit. I'm going to pull it a little bit tight here before I clip it. And then when I wiggle it to settle it, it disappears right inside those stitches. All gone. So you'll have some time where you'll need to weave in ends because there will be two ends for every stripe. But it's so pretty that it's worth it. Um, again, when you finish your project, you're going to want to make sure that you block it. Um, I am a big fan of wet blocking. Um, but steam blocking works just fine. Mist blocking works just fine too. Uh, my only recommendation with mist blocking uh, is you should mist the back side of your work first. Um, because if you lay down your piece and you missed the top of it, that moisture sits on the front. It might penetrate to the core, but how is the back of your work getting wet? Unless you absolutely saturate your piece, which if you're going to do that, you might as well wet block it and soak it in a bowl. So if you're going to mist block, totally valid. Just spray the back side first, then lay it down, pin it out, spray the front side. But you do want to block because it really does settle your stitches. I mean, it's not going to fix gauge issues. It's not going to fix loose stitches or wrong stitches. But it really helps the yarn to settle into its new shape, to settle into the new fabric that you've made. Yes, you've made fabric. That's right. You are a textile artist. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed coming along on this corner to corner crochet journey with me and that you've had as much fun with these two projects as I have, the shawl and the scarf and playing with all of these gorgeous colors. Be sure to click the bell below to subscribe so that you know every time we have a new tutorial. Make sure you leave us a like if you enjoyed this tutorial um, and pick up a kit if you haven't already. And that's totally fine. Sometimes you find a tutorial and you want to watch it all the way through before you decide if it's for you. And if you have decided that this is for you, you can visit OneBigHappy.com to pick up a kit. I hope to see you in our next crochet along. Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you want to learn and what you want to make along with us. Happy crocheting!